Last week we made Mel in her cotillion dress. Whose turn is it this week to become a custom mini doll? Well, I think you're probably going to be able to guess. Welcome to LEV Toys. Your comments overwhelmingly said, please, please make Evie as a mini doll. So that's what we're gonna do. This is where we're going to start. I feel as though these are colors that Evie would wear. The hair is the right style with the braid over the front, but it's the wrong color. So first job today is to paint this hair blue because that's well, that's right for Evie. And I think I've made this paint a bit watery, a bit runny. So we'll paint it on and then I'll see whether it needs a second coat. But we just, we need to get some blue hair happening. So let's do that. This one is Olivia's new hair from 2018 with the braid along the front. So it's just, it's absolutely perfect for Evie. And yeah, I think I think once that dries, we're gonna need a second coat, but let's put that over there to dry. Now let's bring Evie back in. We're going to give her her cotillion gown today because they are just fabulous. This is where we are headed. So first up, she needs quite distinctive hair. This is a gorgeous updo and there is no Lego hair piece that already looks like this at all. So we're going to make it today out of polymer clay. First up, I need to change her head over to my practice body over here. This is the one that gets baked in the oven and gets painted on. We also need a sheet of paper to protect the my work surface and a small ball of blue polymer clay which we're going to flatten out. Not a, not a lot but kind of like a little flattened disc. I'm going to use this to cover one half of her head and this is going to look really weird until it's finished. <laughs> so hopefully you'll see it as it takes shape but first up it's just going to look like the weirdest bathing cap. So this is one side. Lovely, and another small ball of polymer clay for the other side. And this one's gonna be a bit thicker and you'll see why in a moment. And I'm also gonna square off the top and one side because this is gonna be the part on the top and the part next to her face, if that makes any sense. At the moment, it looks like a big floppy puppy dog ear. <laughs> That's not what it's gonna look like in the end. So if I mold this around her head, you can see that part taking shape at the top. And around the back, she's got this big lump, which we are going to turn into a bun. Now, I know she's got a fancy kind of platy do around the back, plaits, a, a plait, plaits that go from either side round to the back, but I'm gonna make that big. I'm gonna make it just really spectacular, kind of almost caricature-y. It's gonna look fantastic if I can get it to look the way it looks in my head. So we've got kind of a pseudo bun there at the moment. Still looks kind of odd, but now we're gonna make some little snakes. Gonna start adding definitions. This is gonna be one of the plaits. So we're gonna put this on this side here and wrap it around the bun. And you're saying that looks nothing like a plait, aren't you? Well, you're just gonna have to wait and see. We'll just make sure that it is all properly secured around. And then we need one for the other side. I told you it would look weird. It'll look weird. Oh, I've just knocked her over. It'll look weird until we are really close to the end. And this one's going on this side. Oh, hold on. And around. Lovely. And I'll just blend this one in just here on the front so it looks like it's coming out of her existing hair. Yeah, that's good. Now, let's add texture, which is going to make these look like plaits. So if we put little stripes crisscrossing like that, look, now it looks like plaits. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we're gonna do it all around the little coils that are around her bun. And then if we put a whole heap of little texture stripes heading into the middle of her bun, it will look like a bun like a little messy bun surrounded with plaits. There, that, there, I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. Now, before I add texture to the top, I'm just gonna smooth my fingerprints out. <laughs> oh, that does look really good. I'm gonna smooth those fingerprints out. 
So it's all nice and smooth before we now add lines in to make it look as though the hair's being pulled back from her face and over the top from the part. Lovely. I'll fix that up as we go along, we'll add some more, but she has got a distinctive strand of hair that is coming from here, from her part, and hanging down the side. And we're going to achieve that with this coil. If I can very gently just tap it on and blend it in up here right next to the part line. And now, how to curl this. Polymer clay is so cool. If you actually just take it and twist it, it will turn into a curl. Except if you twist it too much, you end up, oh no, I squished off the bottom, hold on. It was a bit too long anyway. <laughs> now, now it's probably a better length, but now I have to try and make that end a bit more pointy and smooth. That looks pretty good. Now we'll add some texture to that little fringe piece that I've just added. Very carefully so I don't smush it. Nice. Oh, there we go. There we are. Now this little plait here, I thought they would actually get covered over the front of it with our fringe piece, but um, it didn't. So I'll just blend it in very gently. So it doesn't look like this separate part. And a few more lines for texture. And I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. Now, you may have noticed that the pulled back hair side is quite bulgy. There's a reason for this. I want to add her hair ornament in it. And this crown is the closest thing we have to it. So I'm actually going to poke it in, which means I needed quite a bit of clay to be able to actually get purchase in there. And this is going to be that gold hair ornament that she has with the red tips. We'll paint the red tips in a moment. And it's oversized, but it still looks so cute and now I have squashed most of that definition out of that side so I'll put some of the hair texture back in again and then I'll smooth it again <laughs> and that's good I think I think that I'm gonna take this away and I'm gonna bake it and we'll see how that goes I've actually done a practice with this crown piece checking to make sure it's not going to melt in the toaster oven and it doesn't at the low temperatures that you need to bake this particular polymer clay so it should come out not all melted and horrible so let's take it away and bake it and here we are 30 minutes later it's actually a slightly darker blue now that it's been baked but it has turned out absolutely perfectly and now it is solid and it won't get squished anymore and it's beautiful Evie's head is beautiful. Now I have already painted her cotillion dress. It's royal blue with one shoulder strap. So it's nice and simple, but very elegant. Let's see what it looks like with her new head and hairstyle. Looks elegant, so sophisticated. Oh, Evie, you look so stunning. We're not finished yet. We've still got some more details to put on. First up, her hair ornament needs some ruby red tips. So we will paint them on, nice and easy. Oh, hold on, when I said nice and easy, <laughs> I was wrong, I just smushed that one everywhere. Uh, we'll paint the back and then I'll fix up that one. Blah. I'll go and fix that properly. Here we go, all fixed up. Now she's got ruby red tips on her hair ornament. Now she needs her gorgeous, elegant red gloves. Now the red that she uses for her gloves is not a ruby red, it's kind of a darker, almost a blood red. So that's the color that I'm going with here, which goes nicely with the deep, deep blue of her gown as well. And once again, I think I've made this paint a little bit watery. So I'll get the first coat on and then I will probably need a second coat. I'll see how this goes. Isn't it gorgeous? Red and blue go so beautifully together. Just even up those two gloves. And yes, yeah, second coat later and they are a lovely rich red. They're all dry. 
Now she's got one more important feature of her gown, the cape. And I tried out just a normal mini doll cape where you have a hole and it goes over the head. But her cape is actually quite special. It's actually attached to one shoulder. So I tried to be a bit tricky here. I've used the binding from a piece of chiffon ribbon, of organza ribbon. And because that binding is quite strong, I've used that as a loop to go over her arm and over her neck piece and create that distinctive cross the neck piece of her dress and it also means that it comes off one shoulder the only problem is is that it's quite a stiff material so it's not falling down and flowing down nicely so i might actually stick it to the back but let's see how it looks all together it looks so elegant it's such a gorgeous dress but the cape's bugging me so I could either glue it here at the back or maybe use maybe use a sticky dot but for now I'm just gonna use a piece of blue tack because I know I can take it on and off and I'll fix that up later but that's gonna hold it in place perfectly it drapes beautifully off one shoulder and she's ready for cotillion there you go Mel you've got your BFF Evie and she can head off to Cotillion. You can both head off to Cotillion. Oh, I almost forgot the blue hair we painted at the beginning. Oh, okay, this isn't correct for Cotillion. I'm going to have to take her head off completely because that hair and that head are now moulded as one piece. Got another head though, and mm, it doesn't go for Cotillion at all, but it might work for every day, and she needs a red tiara for that as well, so I'll have to make that too. Let's put her formal gorgeous head back on, and she's ready and simply stunning. Now, who do you think needs to to be a custom mini doll next make sure you let me know in the comments make sure you've subscribed and hit that little notification bell if you haven't already done it check out some of my other videos while you wait for a new one and there will be a new one very very soon I promise see you soon bye